A drawing in AutoCAD is nothing more than a series of lines and arcs, polygons, some text, and other things. This chapter looked at drawing most of those objects, and other things as well. So let's make a drawing using as many of those items as we can get through. We aren't going to concentrate on creating an accurate drawing here, not a beautiful rendering or anything, but we just want to learn how to draw. So we're going to make a basic set of plans that we're going to give to a landscape architect so that he can go and create his drawings in order to help us landscape our home. We're going to use the tools and commands that we've learned about in this chapter. So let's start a brand new file, use the new command, and it really won't matter for what we're doing what template file you use, but I'm going to use the acad.dwt file. So I suggest you use the same one, but ultimately it won't matter. We're not even going to draw to any specific units or anything. We're just going to draw. So in this drawing, again, we're going to create a basic, very simple landscape plan view of our home. We don't have any numbers to go by or anything specific, so I'm just going to provide you with those. First, we're going to draw the outline of our house, and we're going to make it uh, with the rectangle command. A lot of times, the landscape architect will have nothing more than just the outline of a house to design around. So start with the rectangle command. You can pick it here in the home tab in the draw panel on the ribbon, or you can type in rectangle or just REC. Now you can pick any point you want in your file here. It won't matter. Pick a point, and now we're going to try to make this house uh, big enough to live in, I guess. We're not sure what our units are, and in this case it really won't matter for our example. So let's just draw the house at 50 units wide, press the tab key, and then draw it 80 units tall or deep, and press enter. Double click the mouse, and there's your rectangle. You can scroll out a little and get a look at it. Nothing fancy, nothing frilly, just a rectangle that is 50 by 80 units. Now we're going to need to draw our roadway, because we have our building, and then we have our road that we're going to need. Now if the UCS icon gets in your way, you can right click on it and go to the UCS icon settings and click on the show UCS icon at origin, and that will turn it off. That will just get it away from showing it at the origin and will show it in the bottom left hand of your screen. It doesn't change your UCS any, but as you can see as we pan around, it just keeps it there. That way it helps us know which way is X and Y, but it gets out of our way for a little bit, which is fine. Now we need to draw the roadway. Start with the line command. It's in the home tab on the draw panel, or you can type in line. Just click somewhere below the house. You can start to draw your line. We'll make it at about 400 units long, but we need to draw it perfectly horizontal. So press your F8 key, turn on your ortho, and type in 400, press enter. Press enter again to cancel the command, and there's our road, or at least part of it. Enough representation for our drawing needs. Now let's put the road in here completely. So we will use a new command that I haven't shown you before, but it's right here in the modify panel on the home tab in the ribbon, and it's called offset. Offset will create a parallel line of another line. We just need to give it a distance. We'll type in 20 units, press enter. Select the line, and then as you move your line up and down or above or below your source line or the first line you selected, you'll see that there's a preview given. When I click my left mouse button, that's where that line's going to go. Well, we want it below here, so left click, and there you go. Hit escape to cancel out of the command. So we have the house, we have the roadway, now we need to be able to get from one to the other. We're going to draw a driveway. So we'll start again with the line command. And the line command, as you're going to see, is one you're going to use very often. Hold down your shift key and right click. This is the O snap shortcut key window. Find the nearest, it's the nearest O snap. It's not the one nearest to where you're at. I mean, actually mean literally the nearest O snap. It's right here. Pick it. And now we're going to be able to start our line right on any of the places we pick from from our house. Let's put the garage on the left side here. Left click and then draw the line. 
as you see the perpendicular glyph is on, our line will be perpendicular to our road, which is what we want. Let's use that offset command again. Type in 12, because we'll make our driveway 12 units wide. Press Enter. Select the line, and then offset. And there's our little driveway. Not a big one. You don't like it? That's okay. Let's undo. Use the offset command again. This time, let's type in 20 units. Select the line, and left click. And there you go. Press Enter. Now let's draw a door. Most homes have a door, and we'll draw it just so that the landscape architect knows where it is. Start your line command again. Type in NEA for the nearest O snap, or use the shift right click to bring up your shortcut window. Click somewhere on the house here. Let's turn off the ortho command. That's the F8 button. Let's make our doorway. Let's make it five units long, then press the tab key, and let's tell it 30 degrees for the angle. Because we want to draw a doorway that's open. Now let's put a little arc in here. A lot of times the doors will be depicted as having a line and then an arc. Use the arc command. We want to use start center angle, since we know these three things. Select the command. With our running O snap still on, I can automatically snap right to the end point of this line. That's the start. Now we need the center. If you're not sure of the order of what to do, just follow the instructions on the command line. This is the center line for our arc because we're going to draw an arc. It starts here at the edge of the door and goes into the building. So pick the end point. And now we need to tell it to go to 30 degrees. Now, be careful, because drawing to specific degrees can be difficult for AutoCAD to understand exactly what you mean. As I move the mouse around, you can see that degree number changes. If I am way over here and I type in 30, it may do some weird stuff or it may automatically work. Be careful with your snaps. Be careful with your direction in which you're trying to look at. Remember, the arc comes. It starts, and then it goes in a counterclockwise direction. So if I wanted this arc to come start here, come from here, and then go down, I would have to type in negative 30 degrees. So be careful. If you get some weird thing, just erase it. Remember, select it, then hit the delete key, and then do it again. Remember, the last arc command you used will be the one that's up in this main button area. But we use the start center angle because we have the start point, we have the center point, and we knew the angle was 30 degrees. Double click the scroll wheel, and we have a house, we have a driveway, we have a road, and we have a door. So far, so good. One thing we didn't do though, and it was a major mistake, and I apologize, we have not saved our drawing. If AutoCAD were to crash, or you were to lose power, or your computer were to fail, any of those things, right now, you wouldn't have any of this work saved anywhere. So come up to the Save button, click Save. Find a place to put it, and I'm going to save it in my Autodesk 360 folder right here. I'm going to call this a Chapter 5 project, and I had started one before when I was reviewing for this video. So I'm just going to replace what I had before. But you can type in a name, give it whatever name you want, and click Save. Since I already have an older file there, and it's saying, hey, there's something there with the same name, and are you sure you want to do this? And I say, yes, I want to replace that old file. If not, click no and give it a different name. Now my file has been saved. I won't lose my work. And since I saved it in the Autodesk 360 cloud, it's saved in the cloud. So my computer could literally blow up and burst into flames right now, and I would not lose my file because it's saved in the cloud. I could access that file, download it from any internet-connected computer anywhere. And that's cool.